God works from the top down. A miracle working God. Yes. He takes the initiative all the time. Thank God for that. What a great thing. Yeah. What a great thing, friends. Yeah. See, we work differently. When we, we God said, if you want to be first, what did he say? Yes. Yes. Was the last, right? Eh? If you want to be exalted, what? You must what? Humble yourself, right? Yeah. That's what he says. You want to be alive, eh, what? Die. You must die, die first. Mm. <laughs> what a God. What a God. But that's how he works. And he illustrates that. But he, here he answers prayer. Oh, thou that hearest prayer. Mm. Thank God. What an illustration. You see, what is the use of prayer if it's not heard? <coughs> Why are you praying if it's not heard? You're, you're wasting your time. I'm wasting my time. I'm just mouthing words. To no avail. If it is not heard. You know, sometimes we talk, talk, and say, you know, and then that this is it. Let me just know something else, huh? Because they're not hearing me. Mm -hmm. huh? I'm wasting my time. You talk to him. Please talk to him. You're wasting your time talking to him. Because he's not hearing you. What's the use of prayer if it is not heard? But the promise of prayer is that it will be answered, brothers and sisters. For the psalm it says, O oh, thou that hearest prayer. God is called the hearer of prayers. Yeah. He delights to hear our prayers. In Psalm 145, 18 and 19, Psalm 145, 18 and 19, the Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. He will fulfill the desires of them that fear him. He also will hear their cry and will save them. Praise God. But let me uh, move on. See, great things happen when the saints gather to pray. Yeah. Great things happen when the saints gather to pray. God's presence, number one, God's presence is assured. Yeah. His presence is assured. Uh, Matthew chapter... Matthew chapter 18, 19 and 20, God's presence is assured. Let me quickly turn to that passage. It says here, the Lord speaking, it says, Again I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth, as touching anything that they shall ask, I shall, rather, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. You see, you see, his presence is assured. That's what he says. His presence is assured. When the people of God gather together, it's important that we gather together. You see, in this COVID time, you know, um, we weren't able to gather together. Mm -hmm. I, I call it post-COVID, but it's not so post-COVID, you know, because just before we came, I, I, we were so protective, so good, rejoicing that we didn't get COVID, and suddenly, bang, COVID hit us. <laughs> yeah, I got COVID. Back, back in Jamaica, they, they laugh and say, big COVID, come and you know, catch it. Lick COVID, lick COVID, come and you know, catch it. <laughs> um, but, but thanks be to God, you know, we recovered, and by His grace, um, we are here. Uh, here the Bible says where two or three are gathered together. Uh -huh. People don't want to come together in church again. Huh. People get accustomed to be apart. Mm -hmm. It's convenient, you know. Talk the truth, brother. <laughs> Talk the truth. It's convenient. You, you're having your breakfast around your dining table and you're watching service. Mm. You don't have to get up early and you take your shower and fix up your hair. And <laughs> Pastor praying, you're saying praise the Lord too. You're singing with him. You know? Uh, some people they're cooking. By the time Pastor say Amen, dinner ready. <laughs> Very convenient. Yeah? Very convenient. But it's important that we gather together. The design of God. Some people say, well, you know. COVID has taught us that we can do work, work, um, worship differently. We can do, we can do church. I said, do church differently. COVID has taught us we can do church differently. And we don't have to come together. Well, when COVID was going on, that was okay. 
At their ignorance, God winked at. Yeah. <laughs> but now command men everywhere to repent. True worship of God, true church, is when the people gather together. Mm -hmm. I like this chorus, we used to sing it in, 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 in a Christian um, movement back in, in, in high school. I like the thrill that, I, that we feel when we get together with God's wonderful people. Mm -hmm. Just being here with you, brothers and sisters, and singing those choruses, oh, what a difference. Mm -hmm. You hear the different voices, and, and you feel, you feel, feed off each other, the energy that is there. Mm -hmm. You know, I, 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 as you look at faces, uh, I, I, the first time I was to preach, I had to preach through a blank screen, oh my, <laughs> I struggled so much. Yeah. I delayed it for a long time and was using other person's sermon and said, all right, we did the service, put, pick a sermon from somebody else and say, no, let's, let's listen to it. Because I dreaded preaching to a blank screen. Uh, I like yeah. to see the faces of people. Yes. I like to be in fellowship. After a while, you learn to, 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 to do it because it seems, it seems as if COVID wasn't going to be over so quickly. <laughs> so you learn to do it. But, but what a thrill it is when you come together. And, yes, yes. Uh, that's why we come to church, to, 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 to fellowship with each other. To, 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 to enjoy God's word together, to sing together. You know, some of us guys sing so great, not true, not the truth. Eh? <laughs> uh, but, but when you hear others singing and coming together, it helps you, eh? And you kind of put in your little piece and it, and it works, not the truth, right? Eh? Huh? When you come together, it's wonderful. That's how God designed it, body fellowship. <clears throat> not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is. It's not an outdated thing where people think it's outdated now. We are in a new age. Post-COVID has taught us that. No, it the church remains a church. We, we have to come together. You can how can you love from a distance? It's, it's easy really to love from a distance, don't you say that? Yeah. And I never see you, I never mix with you, so I can love you. Yeah. But when I see you and you rub me and you step on the toe. And you give me a kind of look, so I misinterpret your looks, and he's watching my look for me, and watching my look for me. <laughs> <laughs> and the poor sister didn't mean nothing. But you learn how to overcome that. At a distance, you can deal with it. When you're near, you learn how to forgive, you know how to interact, you know how to love, tangible love to see the person and the warmth. It's important, brothers and sisters, yes. that we come together. And the presence of God is assured where two or three are gathered together. Uh, or you can gather together around the, um, the, 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 the TV or the, the, um, the cell phone or the, the laptop. Uh, huh? yeah. It wasn't necessary and, and we still do it and we, want, we are improve, trying to improve on it and keep it. The live streaming mm. as you're doing here. But then we also have to remind ourselves church is when the people come together. Yeah, for fellowship together. So God's presence is assured, that's one thing, mm, when you gather together. But, but uh, let me move on quickly. Secondly, the Pentecost experience happened when the church gathered together for prayer. The Pentecost experience happened. Where do you get that, Pastor? Acts chapter 1, verse 14, quickly. Acts 1, 14. I don't know what time you dismiss church. I don't want to... I'll use my time. What time do you dismiss? Well, they're glad you preaching, sir. You will be going somewhere. Yeah, I'm going back to Jamaica next week. I'll start with you. <laughs> Acts 1, verse 14. The disciples, the 120, were gathered together, right, on the upper room. And the Acts 1, verse 14, it says, These all continued what? With one accord what? In prayer and supplication with the woman and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. They gathered together. Jesus told him to go back and tarry, wait uh, for the Holy Spirit to come. I, 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 and they gathered together in the upper room. And then chapter 2, verse 1, what it says. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord, what? in one place. Yeah, right. uh, but but, but, but the, 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 the previous chapter tell you what they were doing. Mm -hmm. Great supplication and prayer, fellowshipping, worshipping together in anticipation of what God was about to do amongst them. Mm -hmm. And so the Pentecost experience happened in the midst of prayer. We want great things from God. 
We got to wait upon God. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he shall what? Strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, in the Lord. Uh, but then the baptism of the Gentiles also happened. The, the, the baptism of the Gentiles by the Holy Spirit happened in the atmosphere of prayer. In, in Acts chapter 10, mm. Acts chapter 10, yeah. uh, with Cornelius, um, starting at verse 1. No, remember Jesus said, you shall be witnesses unto me. First, in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and into the uttermost parts of the earth. So Jerusalem represents the Jewish <coughs> church. And then, uh, and of course, uh, Judea, Samaria represents the Gentile church. And then to the rest of the world, well, represents uh, the, 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 the half um, Jews. And then the rest of the world represents the Gentile church. Here we find in, in the book of Acts that the, Gentiles, the, the Jewish church was baptized on the day of Pentecost. When Philip went down to Samaria to preach, Peter went down there and the Holy Spirit was given to the Samaritan church. So one third of the prophecy was fulfilled. Now the other third needs to be fulfilled. In Acts chapter 10, uh, the Gentile church, Cornelius, was there. Uh, the Lord sent Peter there. And when Peter got there, the Holy Spirit descended upon the church, uh, the baptism of, of, of the Holy Spirit on the Gentile church. Uh, look at verse uh, chapter 10 and Acts verse 1. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a uh, centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man, and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and <coughs> prayed to God always. He saw in a vision every day about the ninth hour of the day. An angel of the Lord coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he had looked up, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, What? Thy prayers and what? And thine arms have come up for a memorial before me. Mm -hmm. It is in the context of prayer that God poured out his spirit upon the Gentile church. Mm -hmm. huh? In the context of prayer. Uh, Peter was prepared for it also. In verse uh, verse nine, Peter. By this time, the Lord, this, the angel, told Cornelius to send to Joppa for a man called uh, Peter, and Peter would give them further instruction. Uh, the Lord prepared Peter for this uh, encounter because you know the the, 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 the historical um, problems they had: Jews and Gentiles don't mix. So God had to prepare Peter through prayer, uh, and you know God has to prepare us through prayer for many things. Thought the truth. A lot of stuff he has to prepare us through prayer because our human nature, we, we, we resist some things, you know? Yeah. you know. He has to prepare us through prayer. Uh, Lord, <laughs> I want you God have to come tell me this. You know, people say it all the time, no, isn't it? Yeah. We say it in Jamaica too, I'm sure you say it here. Yeah. Uh, only God himself have to tell me this. God have to wake me up with this. God have to show me this. And, and sometimes in prayer, he prepares you. Sometimes you wake up to dreams too, you know? You, 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 you say, I must be God talking to me. Uh -huh. And you change your mind, and the person says, Who comes? I must be God talking to you. It's true, it's God talking to you. <laughs> and, and change the mind. Uh -huh. Peter was prepared through prayer. So, verse 9 <coughs> of the passage says, On the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew nigh unto the city, Peter went up into the house to pray about the sixth hour. Uh -huh. To pray. And look at verse 30, for time's sake, jump down to verse 30. And Cornelius said, after Peter came, four days ago I was fasting until this hour. And in the ninth hour I prayed in my house, and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing. In the context of prayer, God prepared Cornelius, prepared Peter for the baptism of the Holy Spirit on the Gentile church. Mm -hmm. Great things happen when the people gather for, for prayer. And then we see also that the release of Peter came in the context of prayer. James was taken, and Herod killed James, and it pleased the people. So he arrested Peter now, locked up Peter in prison in Acts chapter 12, and was about to bring him before the people, uh, I guess expecting that they would also call for Peter's life. Peter was locked up in prison, and between two guards with chain all around him, uh, the, the verdict was almost passed already uh, in, in um, um, Herod's heart and in his mind, and the people of God began to pray. They prayed. Yes. 
So sometimes you find yourself in some difficult situation mm -hmm. and you think nothing can happen. It's over. It's not, a, not over until God says it's over. Amen. Thank God for that. Eh? Amen. It's not over until he says it's over. Amen. Everybody give up on you. The verdict passed. Yeah. You go to doctor, doctor make his verdict. Mm -hmm. And, and many times we who are believers will say, after doctor, no God. Hey. <laughs> it's not God. Huh? It's not God. You remember, it's uh, um, Tom Rush in yeah. seminary. Mm -hmm. I Tom Rush. As far as I know, he's still alive. Huh? He's still alive. Yeah. In 1979, the man should have been a dead man. Mm. They gave up on him. We prayed him. The international prayer meeting kept for, 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 for Tom. And we prayed and we prayed. Mm -hmm. The man's still alive. I remember for a while he wouldn't even get married. Mm -hmm. After a while he said, you know, like God, serious about this thing, man. <laughs> <laughs> he got married. Yeah. And he pastored several churches in Canada. And when he was originally from the States, he went back to the States to pastor mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. huh? mm -hmm. But doctor said, this was the last summer. So when I went back after the summer, I wasn't expecting to see Tom Rush. But Tom Rush was very, very much there. Mm -hmm. In fact, he quit seminary that year because he said, I don't have much time. So now I spend my time in school, he went out to start preaching in the churches <laughs> for the remaining time. But he's, he's still preaching until today. Yeah. Thanks be to God. Yeah. Huh? Who has the final say? God. It's God. Amen. So they, they pronounced the, the final uh, verdict upon Peter when the people gather to pray. Acts chapter 12, um, verse 5 and, and verse uh, 12 as well. So... Peter, therefore, was kept in prison. But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Sometimes you pray and it takes a while. Tell the truth. You pray one time, two times, don't give up. Mm -hmm. Keep on praying. Mm -hmm. Keep on praying. Mm -hmm. And then jump down to verse 12. They prayed, and if you're familiar with the story, I hope you are, that Peter was there in prison, and at night the angel came and touched his side, the chain fell off. The chains, sorry, the chains <laughs> fell off. Uh, the, 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 the guards were still asleep. Huh? Uh, and Peter was released. <clears throat> Peter didn't know what was happening. Uh, Peter got up, eventually walked to the door. The door opened. The door just opened, so the door locked, but the door opened. Uh, I said to somebody recently that that was the first automatic door. <laughs> first automatic door. So these guys who think that they have this modern technology. <laughs> yeah. huh? God, God said, you're late, man, you're late. The door opened, and Peter walked out, and pinched himself and said, it's for real. Uh. But, but prayers were made for him. Verse 12 of this chapter, it says here, And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying, praying. Mm. They didn't know what had happened, but they were still praying. Yes. Peter was not already released, but they were still praying, mm. praying for him, praying for him for his release, because they serve a God who hears prayers. Yes. That made the difference. Yeah. They serve a God who hears prayers. Mm. Mm. Well, O thou that hearest prayer. Mm. Mm -hmm. Brothers and sisters, all are encouraged to pray because of his readiness to hear. All are encouraged to pray because of his readiness to hear. If the veil in the Old Testament, you know in the Old Testament the temple has a veil, yeah. uh, separates the people from God. Mm -hmm. You have the holiest of holies. Mm -hmm. Only the high priest could go mm -hmm. behind there. <laughs> and only one time for the year, mm -hmm. This is God was telling the people that you're unholy and I am holy. Yes. You can't approach me as you are. Mm -hmm. You can't come as you are. You need more than that. Uh, and so I have selected one man to represent you. And he had to purify himself first. And then he would come behind there and he would uh, make the atonement. Then he would come back out. And, and only one time for the year that would be done. Mm -hmm. So the veil was a, 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 a visible reminder to all of them that there was a separation between them and God. Mm -hmm. But if the Old Testament um, veil said, stop, stand back, do not come. Yeah. The red veil in the New Testament says, make haste, mm -hmm. come. 
<laughs> do not stand back. Oh, praise God. Yeah. Yeah. For Jesus Christ, the Bible says, Yes. When he died on the cross, the Bible says the veil what? was ripped in two from the top again to the bottom. Not from the bottom. It's not a work of man. It's a work of God. That high veil was ripped in two, open, flung open. Can you imagine those worshippers who were out there? Suddenly, they start trembling. God is going to strike us down now. We have seen the holiest of holies, but God was saying, come, come, come. Wow. Because what? Jesus paid the ultimate sacrifice. Yes. Through the blood of Jesus Christ, we have been cleansed, brothers and sisters. We now can approach the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in our, our, in our time of need. Amen. We have been washed. No wonder the songwriter says, have you been to Jesus or the cleansing power? Are you washed? In the blood of the Lamb. Are your garments spotless? Are they whiter than snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? The red veil says, Come now. Yeah. Come. You can come. Come just as you are. For Jesus yeah. paid it all. Isn't that good news? Amen. We don't need a high priest. We don't need one to go behind any veil for us because what? Christ himself has come, represented us. Now we can come as a people of God, enter into the very presence of God Almighty and say, Abba, Father, yeah. what a difference. What a difference. Yeah. Mm. O thou that hearest prayer, unto thee shall all flesh come. So ready is God to hear us that in, the, in Isaiah 65, verse 24, he tells us that before you call, I will answer. And while you are yet speaking, I will hear. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> before you call, I answer. Then you know what I'm going to say, Lord? Because I know every thought. I know your heart. I know everything about you. And while you're speaking, I will hear you. Yeah. I have an illustration, but time... Won't for, we, we are, don't, does not forbid me to, does not allow me rather to give you that but I have a great illustration in my life how before, I, before we pray God answer and while I'm praying God answering at the same time yes. so because of this readiness to hear we are encouraged to take everything to him in prayer Amen. Yeah. everything you mean everything pastor I mean everything everything mm. I can't, pastor I can't tell God that mm -hmm. You mean, you mean if you tell God that? Yes. To tell him that because he's interested in you and your welfare. Mm -hmm. Everything. That's what the Bible says. Everything. Everything. Philippians 4, 6. Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. What? Let your request be made known unto God. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. It may sound small. Seems small, take it to him. Mm -hmm. It big, 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 take it to him. Mm -hmm. Embarrassing, take it to him. Yes, very, very embarrassing, take it to him. Yes, sir. Nobody you want to tell nobody, not even your husband, you want to tell that or your wife, take it to him. Mm -hmm. Everything. Everything to God in prayer. But someone may object and said, I ask, and he did not hear me. Mm -hmm. Pastor, who are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. This God who hears prayer, I ask him, I ask. Mm -hmm. hey, you know, Lord, I've been asking, but he has not heard me. Could it be that he heard you, yeah. but you, you weren't satisfied with the answer? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> not satisfied with the answer. Yeah. So you say he didn't hear you. For in hearing us, he sometimes says what? Yes. He sometimes says what? No. And sometimes he says what? Wait. Wait. Abraham waited, what, for 25 years. Yeah. He was 75 when God gave him the promise, you are going to have a son. Mm -hmm. He waited for 25 years. And he was waiting, waiting, he decided, what? You look like God, slow up, you're going to help God. Okay. <laughs> and you know the trouble that happened as a result of that. Mm -hmm. We run again, run ahead of God. Mm -hmm. You know that trouble. Even now, Even now. Jews, and Arabs, they don't get along. They don't get along. Mm. The family, no? Mm. Abraham, Afra. Ishmael, mm. Abraham's son, mm. Isaac, mm. Abraham's son. Mm. Mm. Family, mm -hmm. family, the Temple Mount. Mm -hmm. mm. 
Mm-hmm. You understand the struggles? Mm-hmm. You understand why each don't want to give up? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But even now, thousands of years afterwards, when you run against, when I hear ahead of God, why? It's a fearful thing to do that, eh? 25 years he had to wait. 25 years. But could it be that also that you pray, you have prayed, but you have not prayed in faith? You have not prayed in faith. James 1, 6 and 7 instructs us um, to, it says, it, it, it instructs us to ask in faith, not wavering. For if you waver, you will receive nothing of the Lord. Yeah. Ask in faith. Could it also be that according to James 4 verse 3, you ask and you receive it not because you ask amiss. Mm. You ask in the wrong way, wrongly that you might consume it us. <coughs> excuse me, spend it on your lust and passion. Mm. So it's all about me. Mm-hmm. I ask, but it's all about me. I want it for me to spend it on me. Mm-hmm. To, to, for me to look good. Yes. For me to fulfill my lust and my passion. Mm-hmm. God said, it don't work that way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I bless you that you might be a blessing to others. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. I bless you that you might bless somebody else. You know, the man in the New Testament, when he failed well, mm-hmm. you know, uh, mm-hmm. he, he said, I build, as a take, soul take that is, build bigger barn. Mm-hmm. Tear down this blue yes. one. Soul take that is, for there's much store for you. The Lord says, Thou fool. This night, thy soul is required of thee. No, no thanks to God. Mm. No thank God for this bountiful harvest here. Mm. Huh? God, you bless me. You bless my family. Lord, we just tear down this and bigger, bigger one, man. Just take it easy, Lord. Mm. The Lord said, you fool, man. Mm. You fool. Huh? You don't know who gave you this. Mm. Uh, who's rain water the, the ground for you? Mm. Eh? You can't fall rain? Huh? Mm. Who's the one who gave you a good climate? Huh? Mm. Who is the one who, who kept away diseases mm. from your crop, eh? Uh, <clears throat> mm. So sometimes we don't get it because we want to consume it on, our, on, our, on our, ourselves. God is able to distinguish between real sincere prayer and selfish prayer. He is able. We are not. Furthermore, the business of prayer is not to direct God, but to align ourselves to the will of God. Yeah. There are some people who think that they can direct God. I, you, you listen to some of the TV people. <laughs> they, they control God, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. They control God and they yeah. tell God what He has to do and yeah, what He yeah, must yeah. do. Yeah. 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 Come in, yeah, 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 yeah. Say, so God. Uh, 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 what what, is it, what the new the new thing now people are saying? Uh, I decree and declare. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds kind of religious, you know, and I, say, I decree and declare. I hear them and say, well, you decree what? You declare what? What power do you have? You can't even see the next moment, but you're decreeing and declaring. Yeah. Instead of, of trusting in God and say, put it in the hands of God. He says, I will bless you if you ask according to my will. Always, I will do great and marvelous things for you. If you do, if you ask according to my will. Mm-hmm. We must align ourselves to the will of God. God, but the business of prayer is not to direct him. Don't direct God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But to align ourselves to his will. Jesus says, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Also, it is no mercy if he gives you what is not good for you. Mm-hmm. That, that's not mercy. Mm-hmm. You know, with our children, many of us, your parents, we know what it is. <laughs> our kids ask stuff of us. Mm-hmm. And we know him better. So no, dear, I love you, but no. Mm. I can afford it, but no. no. <laughs> you don't love me. If, if you love me, you would do this. If you love me, you would. You'd. And they vex with you. What's the matter? You know, I, I didn't know that you didn't love me. <laughs> we, we, where did that come from? You know, I asked you for this, and I, you said no. I asked you how many times you said no. You don't love me. Well, because you and I know it's not good for them. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> eh? So we say, you don't understand now, you'll understand later. Yeah. Hmm? It's no mercy to, uh, to, to give them everything that they ask for. Yeah. Sometimes you can afford it more than afford it. But it's a no. It's a no. Because you know it's not good for them. 
it is destructive for them. Mm. It won't teach them the good lessons of life. Yeah. And sometimes you say no, you know, it's hard. Just say no, you know, you really want to say yes or no. Mm. But you know, in the long run, you're the parent. Mm -hmm. You're the long in the long run, you are the one that God has put in charge, not the child. Mm -hmm. You are in charge. <clears throat> you're in charge, and it's gonna hold you accountable for it. Mm. And so you say no. So it's no mercy if he gives you what is not good for you. That's not mercy. That's not kindness. It's a promise of prayer that God hears our prayer. And since that is so, let us not deprive ourselves of this great privilege, brothers and sisters. Why live defeated lives when we serve a God who hears prayers? Mm -hmm. We long for workers in our churches, in, our, in God's kingdom. He says, pray ye the Lord of the harvest, and he will send forth laborers. Sometimes we get a little bit discouraged, you know, we're not seeing it, seeing laborers coming. The Lord said, pray. Mm. Some people say, it's supposed to pray. Yeah, we can do other things too, but pray. Make sure we don't leave that out. Pray. Mm -hmm. It's Luke chapter 10, verse, um, verse 2. You see, when we feel helpless in, 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 uh, and, and, and we face trouble, remember you have the, the best thing available. You have prayer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel helpless. Don't throw up arms. If you throw it up, throw it up to him. Mm -hmm. Say, God, you say, you know. Oh, thou that hearest prayer unto thee shall all flesh come, troubled flesh, burdened flesh, bereaved flesh, all flesh can come to him. Thank God, what a God we serve, that all flesh, black flesh, white flesh yes. can come to him. Yes. Huh? Whether you're Hispanic or Asian, whoever you are, you can come to him. All flesh. Kings can come to him. Yes. Papas can come to him. Yes, yes. When you speak Patwa or, or English or French or, or Asian Creole, whatever it is, what, what, Barbadian, Trinidadian, all sorts of language. We all have our different ac 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 um, accent. Eh? Whatever it is, we can come. All flesh. Mm -hmm. Thank God for that. Amen. There are some places they, when I go, they will take me in. This is your credential. They're not taking me. I want to talk to the Prime Minister, Mr. Trudeau. <laughs> to talk to who? <laughs> yeah, I, I would like to speak with him. Yeah, yeah. You would like to speak with him? By the way, how did you get this far? <laughs> Pastor? I don't know how you get that far. But guess what? The King of Kings Amen. and the Lord of Lords, Sister Shirley. Amen. You don't need <laughs> no. no credentials, no early credentials, yeah. because what you're accepted in the beloved yeah. in Jesus Christ. Yeah. Uh, and if anyone should ask me, Why, how are you going to God? How can God will, will God listen to you? All I have to say, Jesus played it all, Amen. Jesus played it all, yes. and you can go to Him. The greatest, the one who spoke and the world came into being. Uh, the one who's bigger than Trudeau. Amen. Bigger than our Prime Minister Amen. Holness. Amen. Uh, bigger than um, uh, all the others. Yes. We don't, Joe Biden. Yes. 